the rocket sled shown in the figure accelerates at a rate of 49 meters per second square. Its passenger has a mass of 75 kilograms. Calculate the horizontal component of the force the seat exerts against his body and compare this with his weight by using a ratio. Our first step would be to draw the free body diagram, which shows forces acting on the rocket sled driver. And in fact, they have given us those forces in the diagram. If you look carefully, you can see a downward acting weight. So that's just the gravitational force pulling downward on the driver. And then the normal force is exerted upward on the driver. This is the basically chair is exerting an upward force on the driver. And that upward force cancels the downward weight. But we also have this force right here. This is a horizontal force because it's pointing along the horizontal axis. And that's the force we are looking for in this question. Now, in order to find that force, we're going to apply Newton's second law in the x direction. So we're going to look at forces that are acting in the x direction. And if we look carefully, the only force acting in the x direction is that horizontal force that the seat is exerting on the sled driver. And that's what we're looking for. Now, Newton tells us that in the x direction, the net force in the x direction would equal the mass of the individual times his acceleration in the x direction. Again, for the net force, the only force that's present is that horizontal force F which is what we're looking for. The mass of the driver is given as 75 kilograms, and his acceleration in the horizontal direction is also given as 49 meters per second squared. So we're gonna go ahead and plug those values in. And when you compute that, you will see that this horizontal force F is equal to 3,675 Newtons. This would be the first correct answer to part A, but we also must compare this with his weight by using a ratio. And what that question is asking us to do is to take the force exerted by the chair, that horizontal force, and then divide that by the weight of the driver. Now, the weight of the driver would equal mass times the gravitational constant, so mg. We're going to go ahead and fill in the known values. So we use 9.8 meters per second squared and for, for G. And when we solve this, we end up with five. So what this means is that the horizontal force is five times larger than his weight is basically what we just found. So that would conclude part A. But in part B, we are asked to calculate the direction and magnitude of the total force that the seat exerts against his body. That's a very important phrase there. We are looking only at the forces that the seat is exerting against his body. Now, when you look at these three forces, you have to ask yourself which force or forces are the ones that the seat is exerting against his body. Now, we've mentioned earlier that the normal force is one of those because the normal force is basically the seat pushing upward on the driver. The other force that the seat exerts on the driver is that horizontal force F. The weight does not count in this analysis because the weight is not exerted by the seat. The weight is actually exerted by Earth. It's Earth that's pulling down on the driver with the force that we call W, but not the seat. So we're not going to include W in this calculus. So let's go down here, or this calculation, I should say, and set this calculation up. Let's look at the diagram one more time. So those are the forces. And when you look at them carefully, you will notice that the tails of each vector are touching each other. You've got the tail of the normal force at the origin. You've got the tail of the F force also at the origin. So they are arranged in what we would call a tail to tail fashion. But be careful, you don't want to find the sum of two vectors when their tails are touching. You wanna to make sure that the tail of one vector is touching the tip of the other. They sometimes call this the tip to tail method. So what we're going to do is actually take the normal force and we're going to kind of drag it over to the left. We'll show you what that looks like. And if we drag it over to the left, then that normal force would be present right here. Now that's the correct arrangement because the tip of the F force is touching the tail of the normal force. That is again, tip to tail. And the resultant force that we're kind of interested in is this force right here. We sometimes call that 
the R force because R stands for resultant. Now, if you look at this carefully, we have drawn a right triangle. So of course the Pythagorean theorem could be used to solve for R. So we're going to say that R squared is equal to N squared plus F squared. And then in order to solve for R, we take the square root of both sides. So now we see that R is gonna equal the square root of N squared plus F squared. Now, we know F, we calculated that earlier. As far as the normal force is concerned, go back to the diagram and you'll recall that the normal force exactly cancels the weight force. So in other words, they are equal to one another in magnitude. So what we're gonna do is actually make a substitution here. We're gonna take the normal force and we're going to replace it with mg. Now remember, mg is equal to the weight. So we're making that substitution right there. Really important again to notice that the normal force magnitude is equal to the magnitude of the weight. Those two forces cancel, and that's why the driver does not accelerate in the vertical direction, because those two forces are equal in magnitude, and they cancel each other out. Now we can go ahead and plug in all of the known values. And when you do that, you will see that the magnitude of the resultant is about 3,748 and that would be in Newtons. So that is the resultant force exerted by the seat on the driver. But the question also wanted the angle. It wants the angle above the horizontal. So the angle above the horizontal is this angle right here. And if we look at that right triangle carefully, we might recall the tangent function. Now we know that the tangent of that angle, which is the angle we're looking for, the tangent of that angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And ask yourself which side is opposite of that angle, and you should see that it is the normal force that is opposite of that angle. And then the side adjacent to the angle would be the F force right there. Now, to solve for the angle, we actually have to use an inverse tangent. So the, the angle would equal the inverse tangent of the normal force over the F force. Now, don't forget that the normal force was equal to the weight. So we can actually make another substitution here in which we say that the normal force is equal to mg. Now let's plug in the known values. And when you punch that in, make sure your calculator is set to degree mode. Your angle above the horizontal is going to be around 11.9 degrees. And again, that is above the horizontal. That would be the correct answer for the direction of the resultant. And then the magnitude of the resultant was this value here.